Okay, so I guess we might have to. Uh, okay, so we are going to talk about uh, visualizations and some advanced techniques uh, on how to visualize our data and uh, why we need uh, to visualize our data. So the first one is that it's going to help us analyze the data in a better way. So uh, analyzing this, um, our data helps business stakeholders or whoever is involved focus on the areas that could maybe require some attention. So this visual uh, visualization techniques help us, helps analytics understand the key points needed for their business, right? So it could be for sales or it could be for any type of um, marketing strategy, then this visualization presentation of data helps that companies um, represent their, analyze their data in a better way. So the second one is for faster decision making. So uh, we tend to be more visual beings, right? So um, uh, visuals, we take more uh, data that's represented visually than that in, than if it was uh, represented in any form of tabular form or any form of report. So if so, if the data is communicated well and decision makers can quickly take um, action based on the data insight that we give them, or it can accelerate some decision making because uh, it can be, uh, it can help us to show our data in a better way. And it can also make sense of complicated data, right? So, so it allows, uh, what data visualizations allow us is to, uh, for users to gain insight into a big amount of data. So it benefits them to recognize new patterns and errors in their data. And making sense of these patterns helps the users pay attention to um, any kind of uh, area that the data is uh, trying to show. It could be a progress, it could be a growth, or it can, might even indicate a red flag or um, something that can be can have uh, an impact on the business. So this process can uh, can help business, right? So this is the biggest reasons why we need visualization. So there are different different challenges when we are trying to do uh, advanced visualizations, right? So if you're uh, uh, if you're about to plot, let's say one 11 million data points from um, an example we're going to see, um, your regular Python plots it would be extremely slow, right? So um, maybe your Jupyter kernel would most likely crash, right? So most of us have experienced that. And we, if we don't have a good uh, PC that has like a good GPU or something, that could be a big problem, right? So the speed could be one issue. And the second one is the quality, right? So even if uh, our uh, we have a good um, computer that can visualize this data, it could crash or if, even if you are willing to wait, most plotting libraries will simply keep drawing each other new data points. Um, it could be as a circle or it could be as any other shape on top of each other. So it would be very messy and it, it could be over plotting, right? So it's going to be hard to understand this data when you are trying to plot. So what, uh, what, it, what why we need advanced visualizations are in order to solve this problem, so, right? So there are high level tools that make it easier to apply um, to apply Python to apply Python libraries to our data, right? So we use different um, libraries to help us in plotting. Maybe if you guys have any experience, um, some advanced libraries, have you guys uh, taken a look at the, what you might need for this challenge? Or we can uh, we can just go over it as we go along. So, yes, who's that? Just go ahead. Oh, it's a note. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, we have higher level tools, right? So these tools make it easier to apply your, our different libraries to our data. So they can help us to visualize to, to visualize simply, like. To simplify our visualization, so uh, they provide set of py Python packages that makes it easier to visualize. It makes it more accurate and more powerful. So there are different 
uh, they're built on many excellent visualization tools, right? So they are available in different uh, Python ecosystems. So it's it allows you to access their power conveniently and efficiently. And yeah, and it also works with uh, any Python standard library type data types, right? So they are designed for general purpose use. So we use this uh, for different types of um, uh, business needs. So they're general purpose used. Uh, and so they are also they support some domain specific data types. Like uh, it could be um, it could be for network X. So this is uh, a geographic data, or it could be in GeoPanda and uh, Arcopy uh, uh, and Iris. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing their names, but they also help in some domain specific data types like this. So they are they could be used in geographic data and uh, to to plot some uh, graphs that are more domain specific, and they also provide some extensive tool for uh, for the Jupyter notebook, right? So they they can be a standalone Python package, and they can exp uh, they can help in exporting visualization as an app or even as an HTML file, uh, which is some complicated use. Where we're not going to actually be discussing on that, but this is these are some of the the things that we could do with um, high-level advanced uh, visualization tools. So, right. So, some um, Holovis is one um, company that has different types of um, pa Python packages that can help us visualize easily. Right. So, some of the e examples are the panel. So, it's we use panel for making our apps and dashboards for um, plots and for any supported library, Python library right so it's kind of it's an assembly object for many different libraries so it's going to layer our app and um, it could be used in uh, in our notebooks or it could be used as a standard standalone um, library um okay the second one is hp hvp plots so it's a quickly gener generating interactive plots for your data so this is going to quickly uh, return interactive whole views. Uh, could be uh, panels, or that could be from your, our pandas library, or it could be geo geo views and or any other data structure. Uh, so these are some of examples, and we're going to focus on the the data shader today. So we might you might get you guys might uh, be using it for this this week's project. It could help you um, in understanding our visualizing your data in a more uh, complex or in a more advanced way. So what data shader does is it's going to be for rendering a large data set, right? So uh, it could be it could be used to rasterizing huge data sets quickly and in a fixed size. So uh, um, we also have Lumen. So it's a framework for visualizing analytics that's going to allow users to build data driven dashboards so this is this the, this one's different because it can be um we can use this for yaml files right so we can also use this for yaml files so it's also popular and we can also use this but and so these are the the basic um tools that we use and for advanced uh visualization right so um so yeah this are some example let's take a more look at what data shader is and how we might use it right so uh so data shader is a python library as we talked about and it's used for analyzing and visualizing large large data sets so it's it helps to uh visualize or uh, maybe um rasterizing huge data sets right so it do it very fast and it's a very quick it's going to be um, a fast it's going to help us run our plots very fast so um so yeah it's designed to rasterize or aggregate data sets into uh, regular grids so that can be uh, analyzed for first for further views right so we can um we can use this to uh, generate image so it makes it very simple and um, easy to understand the properties and patterns of your data so it's going to provide a very flexible series of processing stage 
So there are different states that, that we use in, uh, in this uh, tool to, so that's going to help us generate a very um, easily understandable image at the end. So yeah, this is one uh, popular and very common tool that we we're going to use um, to that we can use to visualize our data, right? So, so um, it, it might be so the com the computation intensity steps in this process are uh, they're written in ordinary Python, right? So you can write um, it's not complicated. It's you can use this um, very easily, but uh, it might be compiled to machine code. Uh, so it uses num num number, maybe if you guys know about it. So it's a and it could be used by flexibly distributed across CPUs, right? So um, it might be you might be you need you might need some GPU or some processing using Dask or any other tools that are going to help us in our compu computation intensive processes. So this approach is um, it could be optimized. So rendering pipelines that makes it uh, very practical to work on extreme data sets, right? So it could be, um, so while, yeah, it, this could be the basic use of data shader. And those are, um, yeah, this is some basic introduction, which I hope you guys understood what, so far, what I've said so far. Uh, do you have any question? Okay, guys, um, so was that clear? There are messages flooding on the chat, maybe. Yeah, uh, I was hoping someone would have a question by now. Okay, so we could just go over some um, some code that we could use uh, data shader that shows how to use data shader. Uh, let me just switch to VS Code and we can we can take a look at that together. Okay. So while I do that, um, have you guys started working on the um, the project? How is it going? Yeah, it's really nice, actually. We shared some ideas on the stand-ups too. Okay, uh, so it's going good, yeah. All right, so are you the only one working on the project or what's going on guys? Can I ask you another question while we are setting up? I see that there is another tutorial which says remote independent. Will that be explained to us? Or is it written, is the explanation written on some other platforms which I didn't yet get to see? Which one? I'm sorry. Which there is, there is this schedule that says the career tutorial and 
it says uh, remote independent and maybe some explanation on that where when is it going to be given the explanation or is it given and i am uh, not aware of it? um i'm not sure let me just take a look at the yeah it's on the schedule and it is uh on the notional schedule and it's scheduled on uh for after an hour and 10 minutes so if it's something we need to do Uh, maybe to just step in. I don't know if you can hear me. I hope you can hear me. So I think it's a normal tutorial, just that when we shifted the schedules, some 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 things collided, and maybe whatever was there initially was a remote independent task. So I think okay, just to be safe, just thanks. A call. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Michael, that's a general question or that's for Nadis. Maybe you can just speak up because uh, your hand is up. Okay, the hand, the hand went down without a comment. So was that by mystic, Michael? Yes, Michael. Yeah, I can. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, it wasn't a, by mistake. Uh, uh, I was trying to answer uh, Nardo's question on the, I'm doing some explorations on the, on the data. And uh, uh, by the time this tutorial came, I was about to move on the visualization part so i think this will be the time to watch the technical demo and figure out how i apply that on my on this avocado uh, data oh okay all right so uh this is going to be uh this is the same you guys can find this resource at the official um, documentation site of data shader so um you guys can also take a look um we were supposed to have a, a guest that's going to walk us through this but let's let's just um go through this together so uh so when before starting off let's just define some some things right so what are app trackers uh, when we are when you guys can hear me right Yes. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So, what are attractors? Let's go. Let's start with that. So, attractors are some some values that which are which are normally numeric system. Type. So, they're numeric uh, set of values. So, um, that so they tend to evolve, right? So, they're a set of values that that tend to evolve. So, they they can they're called strange attractors. So an attractor is called a strange attract attractor if the result, if the resulting pattern has um, a fractional structure. So right. So these are the different structures that you can you can plot using the data shader, right? So this could be our this could be our attractors. So these are the set of values that that are evolving. So when they're changing, they tend to create this kind of visualizations, right? So so these are this could be called our attractors. So, um, yeah. So they are called strange attract attractors if they if this pattern is has some fractional structure, right? So, uh, this is a very strange structure. You can you can describe this as a very st strange structure. So this is one example. And um, so we're going to see some plots here and some variety of data so as we go and uh, this is the Clifford attractor so what's Clifford attractor is um, is some type of a strange attractor and it's defined by two iterative equations 
uh, that are determ determined by x and y. So we have two values that x and y, and uh, so the location of this district steps in the path of uh, a practice across 2D space. So th this is going to be uh, in the value of x and y, and it's going to be plotted uh, in, 2D, in, in a 2D space. So, so the starting point is usually from zero, right? So both x and y has to be has to begin with zero. So we have to make sure that this is the first thing that we see and uh, when we are plotting our um, attractors when we are using the Clifford attractor. And um, so we might have uh, four parameters here. It could be A, B, C, and D. These are the four parameters that we have. And uh, so when we're uh, okay, let's just go. So Clifford attractors are type of um, iterative equation that trace the path of a particle, a, pra a particle through a two D space. So we have uh, sine and cosine um, functions that are going to uh, define our attractors, and they're going to help us um, visual visualize our um, our data points. So right. So so we use NumPy and Pandas to calculate this data frame. And we use uh, this. So, if you guys take a look, there. These are the different points, right? It may not be visible, but here the dots are different data points. So it could be in millions, right? So it could, um, it could. So our data can consist of millions of locations. And using number, we uh, we make um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, we generate them like faster. Um, so yeah, uh, we have this <clears throat> Python uh, process that's going to run in a static page. So this, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> uh, this is from Uh, I can't know if you are really good. Oh yeah, okay. So we can um we can have different Python um processes running, right? So we might use the the Anaconda web page, or we could be the notebook viewer, and we can we can see that um we are running our interactive, and we can see how to make interactive apps by uh, exploring some parameters. So we might give it some parameters that could be from A, B, C, and D and giving it a value. And it could be, it can also be used as a uh, standard, standard loan dashboard, unless, like we mentioned. But for now, we can just use the, um, the library, right? So we can just install our library and we can start working on it. So we can, uh, we can peep and install uh, Data shader, but we can also use Honda if you prefer. And um, so, yeah, so this is like we said, we have uh, four uh, parameters, and we also have the first uh, starting point. This is going to be starting from zero. So we have to make sure our uh, our x and y factors start with from y, right? So uh, we're going to apply the sine and cosine factors to calculate our. Um, Clifford uh, attractors. So to calculate, uh, there is um, there is this is the this is the official um, formula that we use to statistically uh, calculate the Clifford attractors. So it's going to help. So it's going to at the end, it's going to create endpoints, right? So this are going to this are going to be uh, the points that's going to be um, that these are the results that are going to be processed. So. Uh, we would have this is an iterative process so it's going to have multiple endpoints and uh this in the end it's going to uh turn up to create a, a a diagram that could look like this because this shows um 
lines that are from that are ranging that are originating from different data points, right? So here there are different data points, multiple data points. So we can visualize uh, resulting data point using data, data shader uh, or using color maps, right? So here it's going to help us. We're going to use the color map library, and it's going to we're going to import it, and we're going to apply it in our plot, right? So here in, we have a function, the Clifford plot function. So so this is the basic function that we can use to plot this um, Clifford plots, right? So we have our uh, our four parameters, the A, B, C, D, and we have the color map. So here we are using the color map library. So we uh, import it and use it um, in, a, in our parameter. And so this this function is just, this is the function that we use to plot, right? So it's going to create uh, something like this, something that will look like this. So this, this, let's see, so this has 20 million data points, right? So every point here, uh, every dot that you can see and every line that is uh, drawn here is originated from um, the data points, right? So it's showing the x and the coordinates, right? So it's moving, it could be, let's say maybe this one is moving from this to this. So it has two or four data points here. So it has 20 million data points uh, from an attractor, clearly makes an interesting shape, right? So some might consider this interesting, but um, I think this is kind of terrifying, but yeah, this is the, we use like, this was done like really fast. I, I'm having some issues, but this is done like three seconds, right? We I thought that this plot was done in three seconds. Yes. Yes, Margaret. Um, how do you interpret how do you interpret the the figure, the plot? Um, so yeah, there are different um um uh, what are they? So there are different arguments that we can uh, get from this, right? So we're going to take a look as we go. Yep, there are like different, a lot of points that this might seem very complicated to uh, interpret, right? I understand. So um, yeah, we, we can take a look as we go. We have uh, some uh, conclusions that we can draw from this plot. Yeah, is that a question? Go ahead and ask. I can't see you, so. Okay, do we have a time? Do we have a time if we didn't use a data shader for this? Like, it, it takes three seconds for data shader. Do we have a, a time we can compare it to if we didn't use data shader? Um, no, I didn't. I only used, for now, I only used this, but maybe you can try with your data. So that you, if you guys have the data, right? You can try and it with the with that. And um, as you, as we said, some of the drawbacks are, it's going to be over plotted, right? So it's not going to be as clear as when you are using uh, the traditional or the, those uh, libraries that you can use maybe, what are you using to plot with? Maybe you can, we can compare with that. Yeah, sometimes Plotly or some even the data frames basic uh, plot uh, functions, functions. Yeah, so some things like that. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I haven't tried it at the same with the same data, but if you yeah. can see this data is like it has like how, how many millions did I say? It's a lot, right? So it's okay. twenty million data points. So it's twenty. 20 million, right? So, I mean, it's, if your PC can survive plotting this, then yeah, it, we can, you can try. And actually, I'm curious, I would like to know myself. No, no, I, that, that, uh, yeah, okay, but <laughs> that was not my uh, point. It really is slow, my, my PC, and that was 
why I asked this question. I, I was just curious. And I was just, I wanted to know how fast this thing runs. That's why. Oh, this and took my three PC seconds, 3.3 .3 seconds to plot. Okay, yeah, thanks. I'll yeah. Check. Yeah, it was really fast. I mean, um, it even plots faster than most of, I don't know, Matlib plots. So it's a good library to use to visualize big such big data like this. Okay. Okay, so um, sorry that I was muted. So, uh, Margaret, so this is going to be um, so this is the data, right? So this is some uh, ED that I did on the data, but um, the same data that uh, displays this plot, right? So uh, here are the data shows. Um, so this is going to this shows the um, uh, what is it? The latitude and longitude of a driver, right? So there's a, a blog on the report. I, I think I've seen it somewhere that shows a day in the life of a driver or something. Um, you can get it in the documents, right? So what this does is going to show uh, the routes of something, right? So in this case, it could be a driver or this is just going to, this is just showing different coordinates, but on that blog, on that specific blog, it shows the, the routes a driver took in a day or and uh, that, um, that data is collected and it's plotted using uh, data shader. So maybe that could help with, with your question, if, if that is a question. But yeah, okay, so we, uh, okay, so we use the interact object, right? So it's, this is going to return uh, objects that let us use, uh, var, uh, use vary the argument to the given function interactively and see the result. So we can use this uh, interact function to see the result. So it's a great uh, quick exploration, but it's it's a dead end, right? So it's only return an actual reusable um, panel object. So we can use we can use it its component to build more customized dashboard. So maybe we can uh, this could be retur the return function object returns what it returns. We can use it in our dashboard um, to visualize our data. So uh, let's define an object here. Let's, okay. Here it shows uh, we define an object and it can capture the result of the interact. So um, so this is the result of the interact that we we've seen. So interact gets uh, returns the, the result of the object, right? So here we when we defined an object uh, and so here it captures the interact result right so we can see what we got so here um we have different columns right so um these are the results that we can get from our uh from, from our interact right so as you can see um the object is um here in color so this is so we use the interactive object yeah so we can now mix and match this component into a dashboard figure as we like. So for instance, we, if we only, if we only yeah, uh, okay, right, so. Um, okay, so here, um, this is going to plot, uh, this is some way we can use it as in the dashboard. Like if we have a, a logo in our, uh, that we are trying to visualize and if we can use, um, 
that's maybe descriptive based on our business objective or business need or maybe what we are trying to uh, display then we can um, we can display our results from our uh, data using the functions right so we could just use it on our dashboard to design our cl Clifford what we got from our cl Clifford attractors uh, so yeah we have this uh, as a function so <clears throat> we are going to use um, uh, this libraries so we, to load our data and so this is what uh, we have so we define functions that are going to get the coordinates of our trajectory data right so we have this is going to help us get our data and we, we can pass this to create our uh, attractors right so um, this is what uh, designing a single a strange attractors is like so uh, we have we're going to use this this is the this is the formula that I was talking about before to design um, to calculate the attractors so we can use um, so in the Clifford panel it's more um, we use the same uh, calculation so to start the Uh, this is for so that also that shows you how to get insights from this data, and I will uh, provide those um, on the link. Uh, the links I would provide them on Slack. Uh, if you have any question, you're welcome. This was supposed to be more um, from a guest, but yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, is that a question? Uh, yes, uh, I just want to see if I understand the, um, the use of this correctly. So in, uh, in the example you're here, you're using this Clifford equations, right? So you're getting the data from these uh, equations, but in our case, we'll be using the data that we have for the, or do we have actually data for the trajectory of of um we don't actually have i think uh uh so we should we should um, be using the data we we have the point data for the points um for sorry yeah uh, so you have the data but do you have um maybe the it's going to show you the coordinates right so clifford attractor is uh, it's going yes. to calculate maybe it has two equations right so we have seen the two equations uh, that are that determines the x and y location of the steps, the district steps someone took, like the past. It doesn't show. So the data you have shows the the location or the data, the points where uh, the x and y points or the coordinates, right? So, but here we use it to calculate our steps yeah. or our paths. So, yeah, that's going to help us display our paths. That's what the basic uh, functionality is here. Yeah. Yeah, so I, if yeah. I, I don't understand okay. this. Uh, so we have, do in our case, do we have to use these equations? Or is it an example here? Just it's used uh, um, to display this. This is an example uh, for this nice specific pattern. data. I don't know. Okay. Yes. I mean, so in yeah, our case, to we visualize don't need, this, we I use mean, this calculation. Uh, okay. Um, so one of the tasks was to uh, visualize, right? On task one, uh, there is visualization task that shows uh, yeah. that asks you to to you to visualize very very. What does it say? Descriptive or what is the actual word? So. You guys uh, are required to visualize uh, in a more descriptive way, right? So it's it says perform purpose-driven visualization, right? So what you can visualize your own way, uh, yes, you can. But this is some way that you can get you can, that can help you gain more insight 
from those data. So this is going to be purpose driven. It shows the location, uh, the coordinates location and the path that uh, that specific uh, person or driver took. So it's going to, sh to display more descriptive um, data, right? Does that make sense? So for a specific uh, driver, it could show the passes they took. You can, if you have any other way that you have, uh, that you can uh, use to display, then feel free to use those. But this is more uh, an advanced uh, or, or a more creative way of visualizing your data. But yes, feel free to use any type of visualization technique that you know that you okay. think is good for it. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, I just was saying that. Yes, I I just told you. Right. Um, the voice is breaking. I don't know from. Yeah, it's it's probably from my side. Don't worry. Okay. So uh, hopefully you you heard me, right? I I think I heard uh, the most important part at least. I think I understood. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, maybe if anyone has any question. Okay. Uh, all right. So if you guys don't have any question, then maybe we can. Maybe we can end the session here. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, bye.